Today is August 26, 2021, and my local area, the government ju jurisdiction, the county, uh, the guy that was, the bureaucrat that was placed in charge of public health, <clears throat> he's a, a doctor, he didn't have a very good reputation as a doctor, but he's a doctor, and he was put in charge of public health. And we have this new edict, this new dictate from him that masks need to be worn. And there are a few exceptions and loopholes. And, but, you know, it's only for, I think, 10 days or 14 days or something, just like, you know, two weeks to the cure or whatever it was, the slogan a year ago, uh, more than a year ago, a year and a half ago now, um, so it's obviously going to be longer than that. But he's, he's giving this dictate, which very much upsets me. I don't want to wear masks. I, I can't, in good health, wear a mask. Um, I, I don't think I have any big psychological issues, but I get panicky and I, I sweat and it stinks. And I can't inhale or exhale as well as I can without it. And it's very uncomfortable. It's restricting, constricting, uh, makes me feel claustrophobic. Um, it's just horrible. Eh, not as horrible as having your arm cut off, but it's it's very, very unpleasant to me. I'd rather walk around with a pebble in my shoe um, than, than wear a mask. And so I'm trying to look deep into this, the philosophy, the, the, the social science, the the psychology behind all of this. And it, it's occurring to me that, that maybe the root of this, this evil, this horrible that's being done by the, the public health uh, tyrant is due to stinking thinking. It's due to bad philosophy. And the foundational philosophy that I, I'm thinking must exist for, for there to be such a thing as the concept of public health is that when a bunch of people choose to live in the same area, they somehow magically become something other than a group of people that live in an area. And we give this name, we give this concept, this abstraction, we give it the name community. Or if not community, we give it the name county or city or state or country. And really, that word doesn't create a new thing. It is just a, a handy way to use one word or a couple words to describe uh, a thought, a concept, a construct, a, um, a, a group of, it's not as easy to say, a group of independent human beings living within the same geographical area. Well, that takes too long. So we say community. And for the most part, we all know what we mean uh, when somebody says that. And I'm, I'm really okay with that, and I think that's good. Where I think the problem comes in is when people, either with bad intent or with stupidity, forget that the word community or county or country or public is an abstraction. It is not a real thing. There are only individuals. And they forget this, or they don't recognize this or realize this. And then they begin to think that there is such a thing as public health. The health of the community. That is absolutely ridiculous. That concept is just... I, 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 I can't fathom how a thinking person could sit down with a beverage and contemplate it for five minutes and not just shake their head and say, what a ridiculous idea that there could be any such thing as public health. Okay, so then, so then if you wait a minute, Shepard, we, we've got to think that if there's some nasty bug that's coming in, well, you know, what if, let's not even say nasty bug, I guess it would be, but Let's say before people were washing their hands after pooping and before eating, before that, 
and before people learned about hygiene, there was a lot of junk going on. There were a lot more sick people. There were a lot more uh, problems and a lot more people dying. And so don't we need somebody to come into the, the, the leader of the tribe, the leader of the commune, the community, the group of people living here? Doesn't somebody need to step up and be the leader and say, hey, everybody, you must wash your hands uh, after you poop and you have to wash them again before you eat? Do we need, as individuals, do we need somebody to do that? Uh, and I would say, no, we don't. And I don't know if this person is drunk or wants me to pass them illegally. I don't want to risk getting a $110 stolen from me, so I'm not going to pass them. Um, by the way, I am hands-free. Another stupid thing that I've done pieces on in the past. Uh, anyway, the, the, whole abs the, the, the whole problem here is the idea that there needs to be a, a central authority or that it's even morally acceptable for one person to step up and say, hey, everybody, you all have to give me 10 or 20 or 30 percent of what you produce. We're going to call it taxation. And then I'm going to I'm really smart and I'm really benevolent and wonderful and well, well read. And all of my best friends who I listen to are really smart people and I'm going to then tell you what to do and then you'll have a better life. Is that a good model for how individuals ought to live together in, in geographical areas? I don't think it is. And I think it can lead to some very bad things. It occasionally leads to good things. I, I won't deny. I think that there probably are, from what I've heard, of course, everything is biased because I get most of my information from the, the corporate press and from from government school books, and you know I went to to college, and so so that that's all stuff that's filtered through and has a very biased particular angle narrative. So I could be wrong, but I have read a, a lot of independent books as well, so maybe I have a little bit better idea. But I I really think that there are are nasties, germs, viruses bacterias, those kinds of things. I think such a thing exists. And I do think that it can be, uh, nasties can be spread from one person to another through uh, liquid form, uh, even little tiny, tiny particles. Is that called aerosol form or delivered via a little air particle? I, I don't know, but I, it's not my area of study, but I completely can believe that if somebody coughs and a half a teaspoon worth of phlegm and saliva go into the other person's system, mouth, and then they swallow it, that, yeah, some of the stuff from the one person can go to the other person. Absolutely makes sense. And so then it would also follow that if, on a, on a much smaller level, microscopic level, that if somebody coughs, and it's not a half a teaspoon, but it's a hundredth of a teaspoon worth of uh, nasties that it could go into somebody else and it could cause them harm. Uh, the, the scientists and the doctors are working on this stuff and uh, I completely trust that they are probably in many cases correct about this and that they're not it's not some big conspiracy to try to hurt me. Um, I completely believe that. And I also think that there are a bunch of idiots out there I'm going to pause for a minute because I just narrowly avoided a deer and I need to get my mind back to thinking. So, so getting back around to the kind of the point of this rambling rant, what is the stinking thinking that is at the foundation of forcing another person to do something purportedly for their own good? And and I think that in this case, as I was just talking about the, the little tiny particles, yeah, well, that would all make sense. And if that makes sense and you're a doctor and, and you believe it, and then you think, well, I'm, I'm in this position of power and I can save a bunch of lives by simply making people do something, 
then uh, of course I should do that thing, and that's a good thing. And I'm not an evil, uh, incompetent tyrant. I am a good person who's doing good things, and I'm a necessary part of society. And as a matter of fact, I'm I'm kind of tops here. I'm I'm really way better than most folks in a lot of areas. Uh, and so that is kind of the thinking that I think has to exist in order for somebody to exert control over someone else. And a, a huge problem is that we human beings very frequently get stuff wrong. I know I do. I, I, I'm the first to admit that there are some things that I think about and that I believe, and then all of a sudden I get a new piece of information, and I realize, holy cow, I was really wrong about what I once thought and believed. And back when I thought and believed that thing, boy, I could back it up. I could say, here are the facts, here are the figures. Also, look, everybody else believes it. Everybody else is doing it. There's a, a absolute consensus within the, the community that this is the, the way things are. Like, I had everything to back it up, but then later I realized, oh, yeah, I'm wrong. Well, I look also at what happens if things are wrong. And so, so let's take this public health <laughs> concept that there, there's such a thing as a public health tyrant or officer or bureaucrat, whatever we want to call them. And this person does some thinking and says, hey, how are people getting hurt? And they look at all the statistics and they decide, you know, today I'm going to tackle a random way that people get hurt. And it's through stabbings. Uh, some people are getting stabbed by other people. And so I'm going to dig into this and figure out how to, to fix this in the area. And so how is this happening? Well, uh, who, who, who are doing, mo who are the, what's the group that's doing most of the stabbing? And the, the social scientist, the, the, the bureaucrat looks into it and says, huh, it looks like it's mainly people with darker skin color, anywhere from, from Hispanic to uh, very black, those people disproportionately stab other people. And they are disproportionately between the ages of 15 and 26, the people who are doing the stabbing. And so therefore, it's my job to make sure everybody is safe in my area, in my geographical area, my public. <laughs> so therefore, I've got to do something about that segment of the population. Or I've got to make knives illegal. Or I, I've got to take some drastic action that I'm going to think about. I'm going to talk to other people in the cathedral, the, the, the media, the, the colleges. And I'm going to see what they think might be a clever idea to do this. And I'm going to take their biased information and say, okay, we need to, you know, if there weren't any people of darker skin colors, any males between the ages of, of 15 and 26, and just to play it safe, let's make it 14 to 27, if we just exterminated that group of people or incarcerated them between those ages, then we would have far fewer stabbings in society. And then sure enough, I, as this evil uh, public health officer, dictator, tyrant, whatever we want to call the person, I institute these things, and then I look back at it in a year or five years, and I say, yep, look at my success. Absolutely. There used to be 500 stabbings a year. Now there are only 25 stabbings a year. Look at how much I've reduced this, this horrible problem. And yes, I did reduce that problem. However, what did I do that was way worse? I took away the life or the freedom. Sometimes that's pretty close to the same thing of hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Was it okay to achieve my desired result? Is it okay to do that? And that is the heart of the matter. That is the foundation. That is the, the principle that I don't believe in that a public health officer, a county commissioner, a building and planning director, 
a president, a governor must believe in order to do their job is that they know more or their organizational type and the experts, quote unquote, that they bring in know better than everybody else and everybody else won't do what it is that they have concluded is best unless force is used against them to make them do this thing. So therefore, it is morally acceptable and necessary for them to force people into doing these things. Crazy, huh? But there are people out there. You know these people. I, I have. I used to vote. I used to vote for these people. I thought, you know what? There, there's going to be a president, and I think this one will do a little bit better than that one. Or there's going to be a county commissioner, and you know it's on a local level, and I can, I can institute change. I voted. Like for for many years, I voted. Like that's how much I fell for the whole thing. So I'm I'm certainly not pondering, pontificating from a standpoint of hey, I've always been uh, more knowledgeable or smarter, or more aware of things than everybody else, and and I'm the Mr. Smart guy. No, I I, I voted. I, I thought that I thought that a if I and other people got together, we could oust a little tyrant from their little small local uh, position. I thought we could do that. And later I learned through many years of observation and experience and study that no, accidentally, you know, in my area there was a really bad uh, mayor uh, of our little tiny town. Yeah, he was horrible, and so he didn't last forever. He didn't last long, and they got rid of him. And they got somebody that's just as bad that isn't quite as abrasive, but their philosophy is no better. They're just not as abrasive about it, which, I don't know, I actually almost prefer the abrasive bad guy to the non-abrasive one, because the non-abrasive one is more likely to fool me, because I'm like, oh, that's a likable person. They can't mean any harm. Well, it doesn't really matter if they mean harm, if they're doing harm. So, I, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts? Do you think that because most people are stupid, which I will completely agree, that 80% of people don't think very well, uh, and I'm, I'm using the, 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 the word think in the true, correct form, they are not good at thinking, at independent thought, at problem solving and evaluating stuff. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. 80% of people are not good at that. And of the remaining 20%, 80% of them are not even still really good at it. Okay, I give you that. So now we have this vast, vast majority of people who are not that good at evaluating risk or making decisions. And I think I know why they're not, and they would be if we stopped hand-feeding them, but who knows. So because those people do exist, and we all, we all know this, should we, and I shouldn't say we all know this, the 20% of the 20%, and that's you if you're listening to this, you wouldn't have made it past the first two minutes if you weren't. Those of us that, that kind of understand that, is it not our responsibility as the smartest one percent or ten percent of society to kind of help lead our neighbors. Well, kind of help is very different than rule and dictate and order and force and and such. So yeah, I, th I think we ought, as as the people who maybe have studied how to think a little bit better and and, and read a little bit more and and contemplate more and argue and debate and hone our ideas more. For those of us that are involved in that kind of stuff, yeah, we, we, it's just absolutely fine for us to say to our neighbor, hey, neighbor, can I offer you a bit of advice? And if the neighbor says yes, then I, then, then I can say, hey, I noticed you're buying cigarettes and lottery tickets and Big Macs for the three days after you get your paycheck, and then you're, you're complaining about being broke 
for the next 11 days until you get your next paycheck. Um, hey, there are some things that, that you can do. You can organize your life and your, your financial world in a little bit different way that I think will benefit you. May I sit down and, and show you a few things you can do? Well, yeah, that's absolutely fine for me to make this offer to this person that's not as financially smart as I am. Or for a person who studied medical stuff to say, hey, neighbor, um, you know, when you cough or sneeze, there are a bunch of little tiny particles that we can't even see. And there's this nasty little thing going around and those little particles go out and there's a chance they could go into somebody else's mouth and hurt them. So, hey, neighbors, um, for those of you that are willing, will you please wear a mask? It's not going to stop them the little tiny all the particles, but it might reduce them by 90%, you know, the 90% of the worst ones. And yeah, then instead of one in 10,000 people being infected, now it's one in 100,000. And so those, that's a pretty good change. And you can do this by wearing a, a face mask, a, a muzzle. It's absolutely okay for somebody to say that. <clears throat> and then it's okay for someone else to say, hey, I choose not to do that because it's very uncomfortable. It's not reasonable. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Okay, fine, neighbor. Don't wear a mask. And then the other neighbor, hey, it's fine. Keep buying lottery tickets and cigarettes and Big Macs. Um, no, yeah, definitely. You get to live your life the way you want. <clears throat> Will that person who doesn't establish a good, strong financial foundation in their life, will they end up being a drain on the rest of us at some point? Possibly. Yeah, they're going to end up getting injured and they don't have a savings account to take care of themselves and, and pay their rent until uh, their leg heals up eight weeks later. So now somebody's got to pay their rent. So either the landlord lets them get away with it, gives the base, essentially gives them the gift of their rent, or they go to a private charity for it or more of the do-gooders, the evil government bureaucrats get together and steal money from everybody else to pay the rent for these folks. Uh, yeah, they're gonna be a drain on society in some way, probably, but it's not closely enough linked. And it's, it's even if it was closely linked, I still can't go and initiate force and say, you must, wear this thing. You must wear this thing. Or you must die because you're in the demographic that might stab somebody. Or you must go to jail. Um, or this collection of atoms called a knife cannot exist. Uh, we must burn or bend and destroy all knives. Uh, we, we can't as a good moral people, as good moral individuals, that just ain't right, man. We, we can't do that. We have been. When I say we, I shouldn't be using the word we because I haven't been. Some people have been for many thousands of years. And it's time that we kind of get a little bit smarter about it and say, okay, let's, let's, let's just take a fresh look at this. Is it okay for some people who think they're smarter than everybody else to join this system of... Uh, this organizational type government, uh, corporate press, corporate media, the advanced educational system. Is, is it okay to kind of form this group of elites and be a part of it and, and contribute to it and be the master over other people who don't want us to be their master? And I think that when we examine that question, I know when I examined that question, I came to the conclusion that no, it is not moral for me to do that. Even if I can reduce stabbings, even if I can reduce the number of people who get a flu or a, 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 any kind of virus or germ or whatever, even if I could reduce that, no, it's not okay to initiate violence or force against other people. That's my personal conclusion. What is yours? Is there a good reason or excuse 
that makes it okay to do bad things? Are people really, really that incredibly stupid? And if we stopped helping them, would they not figure it out on their own? Is that really the sorry state of humanity? If you think so, please argue with me. Let's, let's, you know, come on the show. Let's, let's chat about this stuff. And maybe you thought of some good points that I haven't thought of. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but as things stand, I don't think government is a good thing ever.